Good evening. Man, it feels like it's been forever, huh? You know, it's funny. Um, <laughs> I, I used to really get nervous coming on the air. Um, but, but nowadays, I, when I miss it, like I had to miss a week last week. I was so sick. I had to miss. I couldn't, I couldn't talk. I couldn't get my thoughts out on the, on the airwaves. It, it really made me realize how much I'm, how much I missed it. So for those of you that don't know, I'm Chappie. You're listening to Chaps Fantasy Chat. This is a fantasy football podcast. Their football season. <laughs> um, I, I I love baseball. Obviously, I'm brought to you via the Lenny Monick Fantasy Sports Network. That is a baseball um, website, and I am very grateful for the good folks, uh, Lenny Melnick, Andrea Lamont, um, also some great colleagues. Um, I, I am great, very grateful to have those guys supporting me in what I do. Um, but tonight, we're going to talk football, and in specifics. We're going to talk to, talk about some really good matchups, okay? So, uh, you know, I, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at about 15 different charts. So I'm looking at defensive stats. I'm looking at stats, stat leaders individually. I'm looking at, at, ver, at team defense versus position. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. But I'm going to bring you the best of the best of what I've been looking at over the last week. So I sure hope you guys appreciate it, okay? What we're going to do, we're going to talk about team statistics. And we're going to target weaknesses. We're going to target weaknesses to help build your team, whether it be DFS, whether it be season long. We're going to target these weaknesses, because people aren't looking at these charts. If they were looking at these charts, they'd understand that you can really take the name off the back of the jersey and just look at the statistics. And you can really emphasize some things and picking up quality statistics to help you win your, your games. Kevin, welcome. Thanks for joining, buddy. Um, I, I, I really do think this is good stuff. Um, I... I I've spent a lot of time looking at this, and, and, and again, this week I chose to, to nail down specifically on defense versus running backs and defense versus wide receivers, and I want to use that. There's about six games that you can target, whether again, whether it be DFS or whether you're trying to pick up a, a you know, there's seven teams on by this week, right? So maybe you need a third wide receiver, maybe you need a flex player, maybe you need another running back. There's certainly plenty of opportunity for that um, if you just look at these statistics. We're going to talk about this Thursday night game a pretty pretty good bit because, one, it's going to be a good game. Um, I don't think... I th- so I listen to a lot of broadcasts. I listen to a lot of different folks. Um, I, I'm hearing a lot of people talk about... Um, the Oakland Raiders. I'm hearing a lot of people talk about um, Keenan Allen, Hunter Henry. Okay, what I'm here to tell you is, is by looking at these statistics, I'll be, I'm going to give you an educated guess as to what's going to happen tonight, and you'll be able to turn around and go and use that. Okay, I'm not going to pull any punches here. I'm really a big Mike Williams fan tonight. Okay, I love Hunter Henry. I think he's certainly in a good matchup. Uh, we'll talk about him a little bit as well, but really, if you're if you're if you're wanting to build off of tonight, for me, it's Mike Williams. Okay, so let's talk about defense versus wide receiver stats before we get into tonight's game, because really, that's that's this is the important thing to note. Okay, so what I do is I filter down on fantasy points um, when I do these. And, I, you know, it's it's interesting because I do fantasy points and then I do fantasy points per game because those are the two statistics to me that kind of tell you some of these teams have had buys, right? Um, but the important thing to take note is these are the teams that you can exploit. When you're looking, again, with seven teams on buy, when you're looking to pick up that third wide receiver or that flex player, it's good to know, okay, 
Now, two of these top teams are on a bye. I'll preface it by saying that. Houston has given up 122 receptions to wide receivers this year for 1,703 yards and 13 touchdowns. That's 249 fantasy points on the year to that position. That's a lot, okay? Again, I'm going to kind of skim over this, but I think it's important to take note as we're getting ready to go down into our fantasy playoffs. Looking at these guys, <laughs> looking at these guys and understanding where you can take advantage of this, where you can do homework that others aren't, right? How about Philadelphia at number two? 106 receptions, 1,564 yards, and 12 touchdowns equals 246.8 fantasy points. Second most in the NFL. Okay, again, both of those two teams are on a bye. I'm going to skim over them. Tampa Bay, number three, 121 receptions. That's 121 points that they're giving up to receivers in a PPR format. That's significant. 1,578 receiving yards and 12 touchdowns equals 242.8 fantasy points they've given up on the year. Guys, Tampa Bay has only played eight games. They've already had to buy. That's huge, right? As a matter of fact, points per game. Points per game, they're giving up 30.4 fantasy points per game to the wide receiver position. Most in the NFL. It's good to know these stats. We'll get to Tampa Bay's opponent later on in the show. But uh, here's where I'm stopping at this, okay? Oakland Raiders. In eight games. In eight games. Have given up 101 receptions. 1,589 yards and 12 touchdowns. For 236.2 fantasy points to the wide receiver position alone. They've given up the second most points per game to the wide receiver position in the NFL this year at 29.5. They've already had their bye week. See where that skews those numbers a little bit? Got to pay attention to that, right? So, that being said... Depending on which statistic you're looking at, they're fourth in fantasy points overall. They're second in fantasy points per game, given up to the wide receiver position. Man, if that doesn't scream opportunity, I don't know what does, right? So how do we use it? How do we use? I love these Thursday night games. They're so over publicized. They're so. I mean, every guy with a butthole's got an opinion, right? Again, I go back to it because I think it's important to emphasize. Everybody's talking about Keenan Allen. Everybody's talking about Hunter Henry. And I agree those guys are viable. Absolutely. But when you look at the talent of Mike Williams, it's a different kind of ball game. Mike Williams, people forget, was... A, Stud receiver at Clemson. He was a standout receiver at Clemson. This guy is a freak of a talent. He hurt his knee early in the year. He tore his MCL. He's just now getting back to healthy. Mike Williams is the guy tonight to capitalize on. Is that hard enough for you coming out, Kevin? (laughs) Okay, so. Oakland's given up 12 touchdowns to receivers. That's the third most in the league. This is important, right? Again, they've had their bye. Keenan Allen... Since week three, he got off to that hot start, start, hit a wall. He hasn't topped 61 yards in his last six games. He hasn't scored since week three. Nice. (laughs) Last year, 
Excuse me. This year, apologies. Trying to read and talk isn't always the simplest. This year, the Raiders are allowing 41.2 PPR points per game to the position. They've had six receivers hit 100 yards. That's significant. I'm not, look, I love Hunter Henry tonight. So I'm going Mike Williams, Hunter Henry. Both of those guys score tonight. I think Williams might score too. He's getting healthy. Okay. And that's what you want to see. Should be a good game tonight. I, I'm really excited to see it. I, I, I think that, you know, Gruden's got the Raiders going in the right direction. Right? It's important to take note. This is a... I'm sorry, I'm trying to get to it. I think it's 49's the over-under. That's a lot of points. Right? That's a lot of points. I think this game hits the over. So, so let's talk. Let, let, let's, let's pivot and, and let's talk about these charts because I think it's, it's really fun to break this stuff down um, when you're looking at it because there's a, lot to, there's a lot that you can take away from this. Let's talk about defense versus the running back, okay? And this, so what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to take these charts and we're, and we're going to talk about them. And we're going to use that information to identify five or six matchups this Sunday that we can take advantage of, okay? Um, and, and there are some serious matchups that you can take advantage of. Let's start with defense versus the running back. Kansas City Chiefs. are giving up 222.5 fantasy points to the running back position. Okay? It's significant to know it's significant to know (laughs) they've given up 1,000 rushing yards, 1,057 rushing yards, and 568 Receiving yards to the running back position and 11 touchdowns. They've been a sieve. Okay. It's not been pretty. Now, we'll get to it later. Excuse me. Trying to get, trying to jump ahead. I apologize. Number two on that list, the Detroit Lions. They've given up 903 rushing yards, nine rushing touchdowns. And an additional 512 rushing yards and four total touchdowns, excuse me, receiving, for 13 total touchdowns at 211 fantasy points. Second most against that, against the running backs. That's a lot of points, guys. Detroit hasn't had their bye. They're on their bye this week. I apologize. They're not on their bye this week. They have not had their bye, though. Green Bay Packers are number three. Fantasy points, 206.5. They're one of four teams who have allowed 1,000 yards rushing. 1,036. Andy, George, welcome, guys. They've only given up only. Given up 388 yards receiving, but they've allowed 53 receptions. Green Bay is, you can expose Green Bay. Here's the one we're going to talk about, though. The next one I love. Cincinnati Bengals. 986 yards rushing, eight touchdowns, 430 yards receiving, and three touchdowns. Again, guys, that's just to the running back position. Okay, I got some guys jumping on now. So, you guys know who they play this week. They play the Ravens, who love to run the football, 
who have some guys that are pretty good at it. I don't think I'm spilling the beans when I tell you that we'll be talking about the Bengals and the Ravens later. Okay? So, I think it's important to take note of this, right? I, I think it's important to understand what, because the, this is really what's happening. So, so let's talk about, let's talk about these teams, okay? Let's talk about the matchups. Who's, who's Kansas City play? Well, Kansas City is at Tennessee this week. They're a five and a half point favorite. The over under is 48 and a half points. Fact is, Patrick Mahomes is coming back this week. So, that tells me Tennessee is going to be even more motivated to run the football. Again, Kansas City is one of only four teams that have allowed 1,000 yards and yards, and one of only two teams that's given up 500 receiving yards to running backs. They're also one of only five teams to give up double-digit touchdowns. Guys, if that doesn't tell you Derrick Henry is due for a big game, I don't know what does. It's at Tennessee. Now, I think Kansas City still wins that game, but I think Tennessee holds up. I think they score with them, right? The other thing you think about when you're talking about Kansas City, excuse me, Tennessee, Deion Lewis is their pass catching back. Guys, we talked about seven teams are on buys. Seven. If you're looking for a second running back, you use this information and you go pick up Deion Lewis, knowing that Kansas City has given up 500 yards receiving to the running backs, and you say a prayer. Because that's really what it's all about, right? I mean, if you if you put yourself in a position where you need that second running back this week, injuries happen, right? Dion Lewis, you could do a hell of a lot worse than. Hey Caleb, welcome. Thanks for coming in. So again, the the simple man, and I, I'm 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 not saying I'm I'm a simple man. <laughs> a simple man. Looks at this matchup, they might think, oh, Derrick Henry. Makes sense, right? I'm telling you, Deion Lewis. If you need help, Derrick Henry's not there. Deion Lewis might be. My only point, right? Take it or leave it. We'll talk about some other guys here, right? We talked about the Lions. We talked about how bad they've been. Let's go back and talk about them real quick. If I can get to their stats, the Lions, the second worst, 211 fantasy points, right? Nine rushing touchdowns they've given up. They play the Bears this week. 820, Andrea. The Bears, all of a sudden, find themselves with a bell cow back. The guy that we said all along should be the bell cow back. David Montgomery... Is starting to get the bulk of the carries in Chicago. One out of necessity, because Trubisky's been so stinking bad. But two, out of the fact that he's a damn good player. So over his last two games, he's rushed the ball 41 times, and he's had another seven receptions. That's accounted to 175 rushing yards, 48 catching yards, or receiving yards, excuse me, and three TDs. Guys, this game's at Soldier Field. Detroit is bad at defense. They've allowed 903 rushing yards. I keep saying it because it's significant. 512 through the air and 13 total touchdowns. Again, this is in eight games. Guys, I like Montgomery in general. I mean, if you could, you know, trade deadlines are coming up. If you want to make a savvy move, go out and go out and trade for David Montgomery. He's going to have a big stretch run here <clears throat> because Trubisky's not good. 
Before I get to my favorite matchup, I got a couple guys. You're listening to Chaps Fantasy Chat. It's been a little while. I've missed you guys. How have you all been? Chaps Fantasy Chat coming to you on the Lenny Monick Fantasy Sports Network. The greatest people on earth. I've missed you all. Thursday nights during football season. Tuesday nights during baseball season. Tonight we're talking about exploiting matchups. Actually, my, the, title of this, of, the title of this show is The Exploit. <laughs> because that's what we're doing, right? We're going down and we're looking at these statistics. We're taking advantage of knowing information. It's not that hard. But it takes a little work. So let's talk some more about it. Okay? I skipped down because it's my show and I can. Because I think this is important. Right? This is the matchup. If you take one thing away from this show, pick on the Bengals. 204 fantasy points, 986 yards rushing, 8 touchdowns rushing, 430 yards receiving, 3 touchdowns receiving, all against the running back. Guys, they've only played 8 games. They stink at football. They're starting a rookie quarterback. I want to say this, and I want you guys to understand it. It is important, okay? We'll talk about there's a couple of these matchups that you got to just take pause and really understand what's going on. This is a division game, okay? Baltimore and Cincinnati. It is a division game. This is in Cincinnati. But, mmm, mmm, Lamar Jackson. Oh, 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 Mark Ingram. Oh, can you hear me drooling? If, if, if you have one of these guys, if, you, if, you, if you've never played DFS in your life, go out and start these two fools. You could build a hell of a lineup around them. These two guys are money in the bank, okay? So when we talk about, when we talk about Division opponents, we're talk, what do we mean? We're talking about playing twice a year, right? These guys have history. You have to think about that when you're talking about these division games. They're very familiar with each other. Their teams are often built around beating that team, okay? Especially when you're talking about a team like the Bengals who are in rebuild mode. They're going out and they're trying to build their team around beating the Ravens and the Steelers, Okay? It's important to know that. But damn, they've been bad. (laughs) I always call them to them in jest, the Bengals. If you're not, you know, 40-something like I am, you don't know who the Bengals are. Um, It's meant derogatorily. (laughs) But the Bengals called me last weekend, and they told me they were offended by me using their name because they had, they remind me, walk like an Egyptian. You know, they, (laughs) they actually had some... Some hits. They were decent. The Bengals haven't done shit. Sorry. (laughs) So, let's talk about the game, though. You know, enough joking. These two teams met back in week six this year. This is the second time they've played. It was close. Baltimore won 23-17. Lamar Jackson threw for 236 yards, zero touchdowns. Sounds like the Bengals held him in in, in check, right? Well, kind of. He had 152 rushing yards and a touchdown. Ingram had 52 yards and a touchdown. Gus Edwards had 34 yards, and Justice Hill had 31 yards. Guys, the Bengals gave up 269 rushing yards to the Ravens. In weeks, just in week six, we're in week 10. Okay? This team's defeated. This team's frustrated. They're starting a rookie quarterback. One of two things could happen. I think you'll see a little bit of both, right? I I, I think the Ravens are, excuse me, the the Bengals are going to start out hot. They're going to want to play for this young kid. But Baltimore's just going to lean on him, man. I... Lamar Jackson and Evan, or excuse me, not Evan Ingram. That guy sucks. Mark Ingram are must starts this week if you have them. I'll go a step further, 
Again, we're talking about opportunity. Okay? Gus Edwards has been taking a lot of the brunt of this backup role in Baltimore to this point in the season. You've heard me talk more than once, if you've listened to this show, about Justice Hill. Guys, this is the week Justice Hill has a huge opportunity to knock down the door for playing time in the NFL. This guy was a high draft pick for a reason. Why not start this weekend? I like Justice Hill as a sleeper pickup. If you're not feeling risky, Gus Edwards is always an option as well. But again, if you're if you're looking at bye weeks and you're in a, in a situation, <laughs> you could absolutely take a chance on one of these two guys. Okay. The last running back, um, we'll call it situation. I want to talk about because it, look, you you're, you're probably not gonna. Ha- this guy is definitely not available on roster or on, on waivers. He's definitely not going to get traded to you. But I think it's important to take note. Carolina at Green Bay. Green Bay is a five-point favorite, and the over-under is 47 points. Okay? Green Bay is third on this list. They've given up 1,036 points. Rushing yards on the season. Third highest total in the NFL. They've given up 10 rushing touchdowns. Second highest total in the NFL. They've given up 53 receptions to the running back position. Yes, it's only for 388 yards. Yes, they've only given up one receiving touchdown to the running back. But you know, Christian McCaffrey's a pretty good player. (laughs) He's due for a hell of a day here, guys. He's having a historical year, and I don't think he's getting talked about enough. Um... Excuse me as I try and get to my notes. <laughs> this is a fluent process. Um, Chris McCaffrey has scored at least 26 fantasy points in 13 of his last 16 games. During that span, he's got 496 fantasy points. This is and would be the most points scored by any player ever in NFL history. Do I need to repeat that? Christian McCaffrey. Thank you, Andrea. (laughs) Christian McCaffrey has scored at least 26 fantasy points. 26 in 13 of his last 16 games. So the last year, totaling 496 fantasy points. It's significant, okay? So you really look and, and you you know, this is what you're trying to talk about, right? But you want to take advantage of this. If you're in DFS... I don't know if you, if you, any of you guys have looked at this. They bumped his price up. I think it's ten thousand five hundred. I think he's the most expensive player on FanDuel now. But this is why he's having a historical run. Okay. Point per reception, Andrea. You, you, so, so you have to understand when they're playing Green Bay. Is actually a pretty darn good football. Excuse me. Carolina is actually a pretty good football team. Kyle Allen is now the starter in that offense. 
if, if it, I, I understand that McCaffrey hasn't had the greatest pass catching year this year, but he's due for a big game. If you look at his pass catching stats, he still only ranks third in targets at 52. He ranks third in receptions at 42. Receiving yards, he ranks third at 363. And he's third, tied for third in receiving touchdowns at three. So he's due for a big pass catching game. And I really do think that this is a banner week for McCaffrey. If you're starting a DFS lineup, you have to start him. Um, so is Sterling Shepard playing? Yeah, Trubisky stinks. Daniel Jones, you're good with Daniel Jones. I'll tell you though, and I'm kind of putting the horse in front of the buggy. I, I there's there's you know everybody talks about Mahomes coming back this week, and it's important. But another guy's coming back this week that isn't getting as much notoriety as a pretty good football player. His name's Nick Foles. He now he's on a bye, okay? He's on a bye. But Nick Foles is a viable starter if you're hurting a, a, a quarterback down the stretch. Yeah, I didn't think Sterling Shepard was playing. So, so again, if, you, if you're talking about... There's a lot of good receivers on bye, right? So let's pivot to that. It's a great time. We're at 7.30. You're listening to Chaps Fantasy Chat. Cheers, everybody. Tonight... I'm drinking some local whiskey, a local place called Hotel Tangle. Um, it depends on who's out there. It, it, she's asking if, uh, guys, if you're just listening, you need to go to LettyMelnickFantasySports.com and you need to log in. It really is fun. We have an interactive chat room. Um, I welcome any questions, anything that you guys have that uh, you know you might be wondering if you want to sit or start, anything like that. Um, this is meant to be an interactive show. So I, I really appreciate the questions. Um, I, I, I guess it just depends on the size of size of the league. I, I do like Daniel Jones. Um, I just the, the Giants are just really kind of in a transition stage, and I'm not sure who you can really trust there. Um, Shepard is is fringe. Um, if, if he's in a four, if you're in a 14 team league, you probably have to hang on to him. If you're in a 10 or a 12 team league, I would probably um, try my luck elsewhere with uh, with another wide receiver. Okay, so 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 let's talk about this. Um, I I think it's important to take note again when when we're sitting here talking about these guys. Um, I think it's important to take note. You know, these top two teams are on by. But that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that these teams below them are everyone's kind of bunched together there. Okay, so for you guys that came in a little bit late, Houston, and Philadelphia are the top two teams, um, fantasy points wise at the wide receiver position. They're both on a buy. But when you look at it, when you, when you filter down on fantasy points per game, the top two teams are Tampa Bay, who are giving up 30.4 fantasy points per game because of buys, okay? That's why. The uh, the next team are the Oakland Raiders. They're giving up 29.5 points per game to the wide receiver position. They've given up 1,589 yards and 12 touchdowns. Okay? It's significant. It's a, that's a significant amount. There, there's te- you. I guarantee you, I can get you some talent, Andrea. Talk to me offline, okay? Oakland plays tonight. Again, my sleeper special tonight is Mike Williams. Every you hear all these prognosticators. They're talking about Josh Jacobs. They're talking about Tyrell Williams and the revenge factor. They're talking about Darren Waller. They're talking and and these guys and and these yeah, Jalen Richard is. You, you could do better than that as well. These guys may have good games, okay? Fact of the matter is, you really need to think about Mike Williams and his supreme talent. And the fact that he has zero... 
Statistics are funny. Statistics are funny because they tend to regress back to the norm, right? Mike Williams is a supreme talent. You got to give me some, some I, I'll, I'll hook you up with defenses, but you got to give me some options. <laughs> Screenshot it, Andrea. Mike Williams is not going to have zero touchdowns for long. Tonight's the night he gets off the schneid, okay? 29 and a half points a game. The Raiders are giving up to the wide receiver position. No Chicago. No Tampa. No Chiefs. No Tampa Bay. So, so let's talk about these wide receiver exploits, right? That's what I named it. These are exploits. Let's exploit these teams. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. God, that's awful. <laughs> you need him for just this week, Andrea. Let Let's talk about... Let's talk about Arizona and Tampa Bay, okay? Because of that group, Andrea, I think the Bears you have to go with. They're the only logical um, answer to that question. Because you think about it, we're talking about Kansas City and uh, Kansas City. Sorry, I can't read sideways. And Tennessee, that's going to be a higher scoring game. Their defense stinks. Uh, Tampa Bay... We're talking about them now. Listen to these statistics and tell you tell me if you want the Tampa Bay defense. Okay? Tampa Bay has yielded 310 passing yards and 2.4 passing TDs per game this season to the wide receivers. They're allowing 45.5 fantasy points per game to the White House. Most in the league. Okay, I'll tell you, I love this game from an offensive standpoint um, because both of these defenses are suspect at best. Let's talk about... (laughs) Sorry, I'm kind of jumping around a little bit, I know. Let's talk about Godwin and Evans. Guys, do you understand Godwin and Evans... Let me get to it. Are two of the top four receivers in the NFL? Fantasy-wise? Caleb, give me matchups if you would, please. I mean, I have it here, but I got to go back and find it. So, so, so when you're looking at Arizona, and, and you're looking at... Um, sorry, I'm all over the place. When you look at Arizona, you look at Tampa Bay, neither one of these guys can defend. Tampa Bay is a four-point four favorite, and the over and under is 52. That's a lot of points in an NFL game. On top of that, on top of that, this is a revenge factor. This is a revenge narrative, right? Bruce Arians is going back to Arizona, where he spent a number of years. And was shown the door after he'd done a pretty darn good job. Think about what Arizona's done since Arians has left. They've struggled. Right? I think both Evans and Godwin get it this week. But you have to think about the unsungs, right? We're talking about this piece is about looking at statistics and making educated guesses off those statistics. Tampa Bay's pass defense stinks. So what about a guy like Christian Kirk? What about a guy like Keyshawn Johnson? Here's one that everybody seemed to have forgotten about. Larry Fitzgerald. These are all players that could have quietly big games. That's tough, Caleb. That's a good question. I I like both of those guys holistically for the year. Um, 
I'll talk a little bit about Ridley in in a little bit. Um, Metcalf, you, you know, you gotta love what they've done with. Uh, seriously, I mean, to answer your question, I'm going Ridley, but I don't feel great about it. San Francisco's defense got thrown on last week. That was an anomaly. That doesn't happen every week. But it was on prime time in a short week. I look for Richard Sherman to want to make Seattle for, think about why they got rid of him. And I think Metcalf is a part of the reason that they... Now, I like Seattle to win the ball game. But I like Ridley just a little bit more in that situation, okay? Fitzgerald, if you'll remember, George, started out the year pretty well. But he's really struggled of late. I don't know if that's because Dave Johnson's been hurt and that's kind of allowed teams to key on him a little bit more. I don't know if Kyler Murray's Murray's kind of found some other options and and, and using some new toys. I don't know what it is, but I look for it to return back if he's healthy, right? The guy I really like in this game, though, the sleeper guy is Keyshawn Johnson. Keyshawn Johnson looks like he's emerging, right? We heard all of this talk about him early in the year, and then he, he sort of failed, right? But the last couple of weeks, he's picked it up. I, I look for... I mean, I I might take that. Lazard for Fitzgerald? I, I've seen Lazard play live. He played at Iowa State. <clears throat> he's a good ball player. But you're talking about Larry Fitzgerald. I think it's a good trade. Okay. So, we've kind of identified a lot of these games, right? Well, the games we're targeting. We're targeting tonight's game. Tonight's one of the target games, which is awesome, because Thursday nights, everybody talks about. They're lame, right? This will be a good game tonight. But I, I, I think... I think an important point is, okay, so let me say this before I get into this this last game that I want to talk about. It's important to understand when when you need to know when to walk away, okay? And what I'm talking about is when you look at these lists, a lot of times you just get enamored with the statistics. And you don't really think about it, okay? So when you, you, you're you going down through here, fourth on this list, defense versus wide receivers. Fourth is the Giants. They've given up 111 receptions for 1,612 yards. That's second most in the league. And 11 touchdowns. Right? Josh Allen. But you got to know, you got to know, when it's fool's gold. I'm staying far away from the Jets and the Giants this week. I think both teams suck. I don't I don't trust either of them. Okay? So when you're looking at this list, be able to put it down, right? Be able to say, hey, that's a game I don't want to touch. I would drop the, for if the, are those guys available? Rivers, Allen, and Jones. I'd have dropped them a month ago. Andrea, <laughs> pick up Josh Allen if he's available. So let's talk about this last game. This so so yeah, Josh Allen's the guy there. It's not close. Okay, welcome, Ed. Thanks for joining. How about how about the Saints and the Falcons? I think this game is enticing. It's really exciting to me. Because if you think about it, 
Atlanta sucks. I mean, 223.8 fantasy points given up to the receivers. They've given up 109 receptions, 1,528 yards, and 12 touchdowns to the receiving position. Okay? You want to break it down? You want to talk about fantasy points per game? That's 28 fantasy points per game. That's fourth most in the NFL. I think that trend continues. Why? Well, for a number of reasons. First off, New Orleans is coming off of a bye. Second off, Drew Brees was banged up. He's now healthy. Here's some fun tidbits. The Falcons are allowing a completion rate of 69.5%. Think about that. Seven out of every ten balls that leave the quarterback's hands fall into the receivers. How do you set up, have any success when you're giving up that rate of completions? So, for perspective, Drew Brees, we all know that he's this extremely precise passer, right? He's completing 75.8% of his his passes this year. He's really good. The Falcons are giving up Drew Brees-type numbers to the receivers this year. All year. This is a matchup made in heaven. Right? Yes. Do it with confidence, Andrea. Here's the thing. We talked about it with Cincinnati and Baltimore. This is a division game. This is a division game. It's important to know that. It's important to know that. There's history here. Right? No to Mark Andrews. Boy, that's tough. Um, so, let's look at the history. I'll get back to you, Andrew. Let's look at the history. Last year, right? Sorry, I'm trying to read my notes. I'm not very good at this. <laughs> um, last year, so Matt Ryan returns this week, okay? Now I know what I want to do. Sometimes I get lost in my own thoughts. Matt Ryan comes back this week. That's a good thing. That's a good thing for the Falcons. That's a good thing for this game, right? So if you look at what Matt Ryan did last year against Basically the same defense in New Orleans. He did pretty well. Last year, the first game, Ryan threw for 374 yards and five TDs. Against New Orleans. New Orleans was a top defense last year, right? 374 yards and five touchdowns. Okay? The second time, The second time, he followed that up with 377 yards and two TDs. So both times, he he scored two of the top six fantasy outpoints of the quarterback position versus the Saints last year. Okay? We're glad he's back. (laughs) Caleb. (laughs) Yeah. Calvin Ridley owners are glad Matt Ryan's back, right? Last year, (coughs) Ridley, against the newly acquired Eli Apple, had eight catches for 93 yards and a touchdown. Seeing a career-high 13 targets. I, I, I think he gets targeted heavily again. Okay? I... I... I think that it's going to be really tough 
for Matt Ryan to find Julio Jones, and I think he's going to start looking Ridley's way. Now, it's not going to be easy. But I think you might see that same sort of stat line this year, or this week, out of Calvin Ridley. I like DK Met- or yeah, Metcalf, right? But I, I do think this is a sneaky pick this week. These teams are familiar. Again, they game plan for each other. They have packages for these teams. This should be one hell of a game. Now, let's turn this around. Let's talk about Mike Thomas. Because really, yes, Alvin Kamara is coming back. Alvin Kamara is healthy. Okay? But the guy that gets underappreciated, in my opinion, as I try and get to it, excuse me, is Michael Thomas. Okay? This is a guy... This is a guy who has been the model consistency. He has scored double-digit fantasy points points every week this season. He's topped 20.3 points three times this season, and he had a 41.2-point game versus Tampa Bay in Week 5. He's coming off of a bye week, and he's got a healthy Drew Brees. What's not to like? Right? I mean, really, if, if you're going to start a DFS team, you, you have to look at, at these two guys as your anchors, right? Um, dang it, I'm trying to get, I got information I'm trying to get to. Bear with me. He, this is a guy who's been. Again, the model of consistency over the past two years. I'm spitballing because I can't find it, and I apologize for that. He's caught 83% of his passes since the beginning of the last year, leading the NFL, and he's doing it all against number one receivers. So when you're starting your DFS team, this is the guy you're looking at, right? So... There we have it. I just got a few news and notes, a few little tidbits I want to share with you guys before I get off of here. But I think it's important to kind of circle back to what we talked about. Teams, games we can exploit this week, right? Um, Quickly, let's go through. From the running back standpoint, you're looking at Tennessee against a porous Kansas City run defense. Of course, you want Derrick Henry. But you also want to look at Deion Lewis as Kansas City gives up plenty of receptions um, and plenty of yards on the ground. Obviously, with Mahomes coming back, it's going to be a fast pace to that game. I really like the Titans running backs this week. If you need a player, Deion Lewis is someone you can pick up. Detroit at Chicago was another one. Jason, welcome. I see you. Um, I-, I talked earlier about David Montgomery being becoming a bell cow back. Last two games, 175 rushing yards, 48 receiving yards, and three touchdowns. I look for him to get 20 touches this weekend. And I look for him to really capitalize on a, def- on a Detroit defense that's given up 903 rushing yards on the ground and another 512 through the air. Okay? Um, Baltimore and Cincinnati, again, flag goes up. Flag goes up. This is a division game. That said, in week six, Lamar Jackson tore him up. Tore him up. Okay? A hundred and... Sorry, let me get to it. Because it's significant. It's a large number. He threw for 236 yards. He didn't have any passing touchdowns. But he had 152 rushing rushing yards and a touchdown. Ingram added another touchdown. I look for similar type of performance out of... um, the Baltimore running backs this week. You have to be careful, though. Hey, Lenny, welcome. The last running back matchup that we want to capitalize on, of course, everyone wants Christian McCaffrey. We talked about his pay bump. Um, When you're looking at a DFS and a FanDuel, it's worth it, right? 
This guy is having the greatest fantasy year of all time when you look at his last 16 games. He's he scored 26 fantasy points in 13 of his last 16 games. 496 fantasy points. No one else has scored that many fantasy points in a 16 game per- period ever. Okay? Receivers. Here's where we can capitalize again. These are the matchups we want to talk about tonight, right? I love both of these teams, but everybody's going to talk about Evans and Godwin, rightfully so, rightfully so, but Tampa Bay's the one, Tampa Bay's the one that has the terrible pass defense, okay? Arizona, you can get some sneaky guys, Keyshawn Johnson we talked about, we talked about Larry Fitzgerald. We talked about Christian Kirk a little bit. These are all guys. Tampa. There's a revenge factor here. Bruce Arians is going against his former team in Arizona. They left unamicably, right? And then lastly, the other matchup we can capitalize on, we just talked about the Saints and the Falcons. I really do think that it's going to be another case of keeping up. I like the Atlanta receivers as sleeper picks in this matchup. No one's giving you Michael Thomas. You're not playing him unless you have him, which I luckily do in a couple leagues. But fact of the matter is, if you have a Calvin Ridley, if you have an Austin Hooper who I didn't talk about, but I will. Guys, Austin Hooper leads all tight ends in fantasy points on the year. Okay? If you would ask... Ten fantasy football players, nine of them would probably tell you Kelsey. They'd probably tell you all kinds of other players, right? It's Waller, right? It's Austin Hooper, okay? This is a target. This is someone you can go out and target. Hunter Henry is another guy. Talk about tonight's game. Hunter Henry is already missing a month of the season or whatever, ninth, at the tight end position with 79.8 fantasy points. Okay? So, he is a significant part of this offense given that he's missed time. Austin Hooper's given scored 143.1 fantasy points on the year. Leads names like Kelsey, Waller, Kittle, Ertz, Ingram, Andrews. It's significant. Right? Why not go out and target this guy? Okay, why not say, hey, I'll give you, Adam is a throw-in. Adam is a throw-in to it. People aren't paying attention to that level. So, a couple tight ends. Again, Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry, Henry is averaging 16 fantasy points per game. That's second most among the position. Just under Austin Hooper at 17.9. How long do you need him for, Andrew? Um, then Hunter Henry. Darren Waller's third. So these are names that aren't... Ronald Jones is who you target at running back. Okay? David Montgomery is who you target at running back. It depends on how deep your league is. It depends on what you're talking about by target. Okay? Um, for this week, again, I love Deion Lewis. I think he's a sleeper play. Um, Jalen Samuels is going to have another big week this week. I didn't talk about my Steelers. I, 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 I got to tell you. I got to tell you. The Steelers against the Rams. I love that matchup. I love that matchup for Mason Rudolph. I know that Aaron, Mc, or, uh, Aaron Donald is coming home to Pittsburgh. I know he's playing his teammate and James Conner, who's probably not playing, it looks like. Okay? But Trey Edmonds is another one. The Steelers' defense is going to set up their run game for success. Thursday nights at 7. I love doing this. I've missed doing this. Um... I'll tell you, it it always flies by. Um, I always feel like I have too much information at the end of the night. But fact of the matter is, um, I feel like I start rambling when I get off script. I hope you guys have appreciated (laughs) what I'm putting together for you. 
Um, I'm going to continue to do it this way because I think it's one, it's fun, right? So we're looking at the stats and we're using those stats and we're filtering down on where where we can. I, I can't get through 16 matchups in an hour, but I can get through the five or six best matchups, right? The five or six best matchups to talk about, to think about, to gear towards. And that's what we've done here. I'll continue to do this on Thursday nights. Again, tonight, my Thursday night special, Mike Williams. I love Mike Williams. I love Hunter Henry. I like Hunter Renfro. I think that this is going to be a high-scoring game, an entertaining game, and I hope you guys all enjoy. Thursday nights, the Lenny Melnick Fantasy Sports Network, brought to you by Hotel Tango Whiskey, a local product here in Indianapolis. Um, (laughs) I always enjoy doing this. Um, I'll see you guys again next Thursday. Thank you, Lenny. Thank you, Jay. Uh, thank you, George. Thank you, Ed, Andrea, Caleb, uh, whoever else I might have missed. I, 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 Kevin, um, I've really enjoyed having an audience with you guys tonight. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys soon next Thursday. Uh, don't miss it. Uh, until next time, good evening. Go Chargers. <laughs>